Good morning and welcome to your market report for Tuesday, February 13th, 2018. Now listen guys, here's the thing. Everything's going steady as I thought it was going to go. Exactly on as I thought it was going to go. Uh, we're going to get the chart started right here. Now we're going to take a look at the Dow Jones first. And she's down 156 points this morning, but that's that's uh she's up over 400 yesterday so i mean we're still up like it's up like uh let's see um well 150 from roughly uh 400 and something uh you know it's still up like uh several hundred points but uh the thing is is that gradual i'm expecting that gradual increase i'm not expecting any big falls right now in the dow jones or the uh other indices but uh here's the thing uh, let's take a look here at the uh, bonds and rates, and this is the reason why. Uh, it says, breaking news, Dow, uh, Dow opens more than 100 points lower as chopping trading continues. Breaking, that's not really breaking news to me. 100 points is nothing compared to what we've seen lately. Uh, I don't expect it really to uh, stay down today. I expect that we're going to have times today when she's in the green. Now, here's the thing. If you take a look at this U.S. 10-year rate right here, uh, 2.84, it's it's roughly what's happened is is everything's been priced in uh, for now, for now. The turbulence w that was in the markets uh, has priced itself in uh, to both the bond market now is is roughly staying. Uh, I can see it creeping up over the next couple months until the end of March. Uh, but slowly, the bond price. But now when they raise it from 20 to 30 billion come the end of March, this is going to cause the bond uh, yields to spike higher again. Uh, this is going to set everything on fire. <laughs> Basically, uh, and if that don't do it three months later, they're going to finish it off. I mean, they're going to finish and bury it. It's going to be it. You know, so this is the way it's going. So now let's take a look at the silver price today while we're in here. And we see a dropping silver price right now. Uh, this is uh, absolutely ridiculous how cheap silver is right now. But then again, oil is being crushed too. Uh, if we take a look at the oil price today, let me see. I was just on it right here, oil price. Okay, let me expand the chart out. 58.69, 58, this is for Sweet Light Crude, of course, uh, $58.69. I think it should be up around 65 bucks, really. And uh, she's knocked down and she's bottom bouncing around 58.70. She's down today, 60 cents. Now, this is, is really, the price of oil is really getting down. Uh, if it goes under 50 bucks, we're just going to start to get into the territory where, uh, where wells are going to start going offline again uh if it goes under 50. we're going to have to keep our eye on this because let's face it it was about ten dollars higher not long ago and she's dropped about 10. she drops 10 more uh we're going to start to see uh rigs go offline again i mean it's just as simple as that okay so uh now uh Thing is, okay, we'll go back to the bonds here for just a second. 2.84, we're going to take a look at the 10-year, and we're going to take a look at the uh, chart here on the 10-year. Okay, and we're going to take a look at the five days. What we see here is we see this this line right here was coming back up from the big fall in the market, right? And what we see ever since is chop, up, down, up, down, choppy. Like, But it's not really going anywhere. If we take a look, there's a recovery from that market right here. on the, on the the. We can see it's been priced in. Look all the way across here. It's just basically uh, following this, this line right here. Where my where my where my cross is on this line here, that line right there is following that. For let's see, for days now, and I think it's going to start to move up, but ever so slowly. 
Now, up means that yields are rising. So I think the yield is going to start to rise, but ever so slowly until March. So I think it's going to be marching its way up to 3%. Uh, and I think by the time we get to March, she will peak over 3% on the 10-year. This is going to start to put the pressure on this and on the markets, I mean. And the markets are going to continue to bounce back, and they might even set new highs. Here's the thing, though. The pressure is going to be coming on them. Then when they raise it from $20 billion to $30 billion at the end of March, then you're going to see a spike up in the in these bond yields on the 10-year. It's going to go up to about 3.25. It's going to go up fairly quickly to about 3.25. When it crashes, when it goes over 3.25, I believe that that's when we're going to see our big crash in the stock market. And it's going to make this crash that we just had and by then, the stock market might be at new highs. It might be like uh, 27,000, you know, the Dow Jones. Then we're going to see the big crash. We're going to see multiple days of 1,000-point drops. Uh, we're going to see it go down. I think we're going to see it go back down to like 18,000, 16,000, stuff like that. And it's going to be the big crash. And this is going to really, the fear is really going to enter into the whole world's market then. The fear almost entered in this time. I remember uh, when the market was really crashing this last time, when it was at its peak of crashing that particular night, and I watched the pre-market and she was down a lot, I seen silver start to take off, gold started to take off, and the dollar started to take off. So they showed their hand. Let's take a look at the dollar today. She's lost a little bit of steam, uh, 89.75, you know. It was running, running around 90 point something, so she's lost a little bit of steam. Now let's take a look at uh, cryptocurrencies, Bitstamp, okay? At Bitstamp, we're looking today at 86.41, okay? So uh, basically, it's it's on a slow increase, the cryptocurrency right now. Um, and uh, if we go to uh, cryptocurrency market capitalizations, we see it's a mixed bag. Uh, some cryptocurrencies are in the green. Uh, Ethereum Classic really today has done very well. It's up 18%, but most of them are in the red. Uh, Litecoin's in the green, but just marginally at 158 bucks. Ethereum, $848. So... But most of them are a little bit in the red, so it's 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 roughly staying around the same, really. Though you know, uh, our market capitalization today is four hundred nineteen billion. It was down in the three hundreds there last week, you know, and but you got to know a couple weeks before that it was up over seven hundred billion, so it's come a long way and went a long way. You know, I think the highest was what, 727 billion, something like that. And that's when Bitcoin was up approaching $20,000 a piece. Uh, we're going to take a look at the copper prices this morning. And what we see is copper prices staying roughly steady. Now, you got to understand that copper prices have made an increase, uh, quite a little increase. They were down around, I think, $2 and something. And now they're over $3. Uh, that's the kind of increase we should have ex actually saw that exact same increase in silver and gold. Which means right now, silver should be $25 and gold should be in excess of $1,500 right now. Copper is a barometer of that. Uh, see, because copper has not been uh, uh, manipulated. The gold and silver price have and so this shows where the gold and silver price should be right now if they if they the market wasn't so heavily manipulated silver should be 25 bucks at least right now if it wasn't so heavily manipulated uh and uh gold uh, probably in excess of 1500 if it wasn't so heavily manipulated these mar these two markets are very heavily manipulated uh gold and silver so this has been your market update for today. Uh, listen, uh, what I, I'll tell you what I'm expecting roughly is I'm expecting the stock market to continue on in its trend until the end of March. Uh, I expect it good chance it's going to make new highs, maybe 27,000. 
Uh, when it's really high like that in the end of March, the uh, 10-year U.S. Treasury rate is going to uh, slowly creep up to 3%. And then after March is over in April, it's going to shoot up from 3% up to about 3.25%. This is what I'm expecting rather rapidly. And when it hits about 3.25%, the markets are going to crash. Uh, like they crashed this time, except this next crash is going to be a bigger one, much bigger. Uh, fear is going to really enter into the market, and this is going to exacerbate the crash. Uh, this is what I'm expecting sometime probably in April. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, going to, it's really gold and silver are going to take off at that point. This is what I believe. Uh, and so is the dollar. Then what I think is going to happen is, is I think the Fed is going to step in sometime later this year. And they're going to announce a new round of quantitative easing. They're going to announce new monetary stimulus policies. They're going to have to prop up probably several banks maybe. Uh, Deutsche Bank might be one of the banks that Germany has to prop up. Uh, they're, believe me, they probably will come into the rescue if Deutsche Bank goes down. Uh, they're not going to let this crisis like a lot of people say, oh, uh, they're going to let this crisis unfold and they're not going to do anything. They're going to stand back and let these banks fail, like Deutsche Bank. They're, gonna, they're going to uh, stand back and let the markets fail, and they're not going to come in with any, in, any support. This is not true. What's going to happen is, is when everything starts to fail and everything starts to go down, at a certain point, they're going to step in and they're going to pour liquidity into the system. This is what's going to send us over the edge and put us into the hyperinflation. They have to do this. They got no other choice. Because if they didn't, the whole system would fail and they would be to blame. Uh, they would be held accountable. They don't ever want to be held accountable. They're not going to be held accountable. Not for that. Uh, can you imagine how they would be held accountable if all of your Social Security checks from all the, all the elderly people were to, were to not be paid? Uh, they're not going to do that because they would be in big trouble. They would have old ladies with canes chasing them down the street. No, that's not going to happen. What they're going to do is they're going to continue to pay. But they're going to pay with dollars that are, not, that are not worth much or almost worthless. And that way, they are defaulting, but they're not really defaulting as in they're, they're going to get in any trouble. Take a look. Uh, just this last week or two, I had a little bit of money invested in, uh, in uh, BitConnect. BitConnect is going to do the same default the same way that they defaulted. BitConnect defaulted, but they paid everybody. In BitConnect coins, it became worthless. And this is the same thing that the government's going to do. They're going to continue to pay your Social Security. They're going to pay everything, but they're going to pay it in dollars that are practically worthless. This is the plan, to kill the dollar. Uh, anyway, listen, thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe, and uh, we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye for now.